asking can something be understood you have conveniently protected hidden somebody can something be understood by whom that whom is very important to protect that subject is very important to be defended and because that subject is very important to be defend, defended so you will feed objects even to understanding because the nature of the subject is divided small because the subject is such that he cannot be total so you will conveniently pick up small fragmented divided objects even in matters of understanding isn't it surprising how we cannot do without objects we turn god into an object we want an object for understanding we want an object to love when we say what is truth we want an objective definition everything needs to be objective everything needs to have a shape size color outline a limit everything needs to be something so that the somebody who is asking the question may be protected because the somebody cannot go beyond the something this trick always works upon us we are never able to beat this trick we want to understand intelligence we want to understand sensitivity we want to understand god don't you see what you are doing in making an object of god you are only protecting the subject that you are that is what you are doing with that objective in mind whatever question you ask will only add to your misery you are saying leave the disease alone and change everything else about me
when it is said that understanding is objectless it is not merely an academic statement it is not merely a theoretical assertion it has something to do with your day to day life with your moment to moment breathing because there are no objects except the ones that are a mirror image of you as the subject when you say that i understand something all you mean is that you now have a conceptual framework about it all you mean is that now you have conveniently settled to a conclusion which is a thought a thought that pleases the subject that you are a thought that is not disruptive at all because it is emerging from your own structures what emerges from your own patterns and structures cannot disrupt your very patterns and structures it is impossible your thoughts can be of no help to you your analysis can be of no help to you you might be pleasing yourself with great conclusions but you are just kidding yourself they cannot help you what arises from the mind will have the same quality as that of the mind it cannot provide a different quality to the mind if you think that your thoughts can change your life they cannot so much you say so much you write so much is your need to express but it is of no avail your plans cannot carry you into the beyond your thoughts will not unravel the mystery to you your conclusions have not brought you to the truth your understanding has not shown you anything beyond your knowledge we have a deep need to feel competent and smart it gives a kind of temporary relaxation to feel that i know that i have put my finger on the real thing adequacy is so 
intoxicating it is such a deep fulfillment that even its fake shadow is deeply pleasing under no condition would we be prepared to accept that we know nothing at all and when i say nothing at all there is no allowance for anything at all if you amuse yourself by telling that i know a little bit this little bit is sufficient for your tendencies to raise an entire world a world in which you are the master the authority the knowledgeable one look at the way you have put it can sensitivity be understood from the confinement of the mind do you know when we put the article the hmm t h e the do you know when is it to be used in language when is it to be used in language when you are referring to something known the first time you see somebody it is a tree and then it is the tree see what your language is telling about you can sensitivity be understood from the confinement of the mind do you really know your confinement the confinement as if you are referring to something that you are so very aware of you know your confinement and still you are confined what do you mean by saying the confinement of the mind you know what is mind then why play games who's there to be deceived even the slightest belief in the capability of your thought and your expression and you are finished ego is very adjustable in a sense it does not demand too much of space give it a little bit of leeway just a little bit of seat and it will park itself it does not say give me an entire wide spacious throne it says give me a bit an inch and of course we are so generous that we give it much more than an inch you are sure you will understand sensitivity 
from within the confinement of the mind or outside the confinement of the mind. When you say, I do not understand something, you imply that you know at least that it can be understood. Do you know even this much about sensitivity or understanding? The world wants you to be puffed up. Hmm? All full of confidence. Chin up. Bright smiles. Hmm? That image of the successful and intelligent man who knows hmm? In fact, the world doesn't like it if you declare that you do not know. The world desperately wants you to feel that you know. And what you do not know can be known, so says the world. The world says, if you do not know something, then there are the universities, the teachers, the encyclopedias, the internet. Either you know or you can know. One man, humbly declaring that neither he knows, Nor is there a possibility of knowing. It is a danger to the entire world. The world does not really dislike your arrogance. It feeds on arrogance. It lives on haughtiness. But the world starts trembling in front of humility. One man declaring that knowledge and the pleasure that arises of the knowledge are fake. That all our confidence about the lives that we are leading and the world that we are living in is misplaced. The threat to the whole order But through various ways and thousands of mechanisms, they have filled you up, they have inflated you. Even humility is a part of that inflation. You do not know humility. For you, humility is a concept that has been stuffed into you. So the fellow is inflated with humility. We have lots of people who are full of nothingness. They are very, very full of nothingness. Absolutely inflated. With concept of nothingness.
Ask them, what do you have? They'll say nothing. Oh, and it's such a huge and solid and massive nothing. It's not the vacuum of the Buddha. Colossal rock, their nothingness. There is no difference whether you act arrogant or you act humble. You do not know what is arrogance and what is humility. Both are just dream stuff. That you have used to make yourself up. It doesn't matter whether you are good or bad. It doesn't even matter whether you are Raising a question here or not raising a question. Those who write questions have their own smart reasons to write questions. Those who do not write questions have their own smart reasons to not to write questions. How does it matter? Those who come are neither better nor worse than those who do not come. Those who come, come because they are sure that they are gaining something. Those who do not come might be sure that they are not gaining something. But surely both are sure that they know what is meant by gain and what is meant by loss. Hmm? And if we do not gain stuff for a while, how desperate we become. The fellow who acts humble is actually worse off than the one who is acting arrogant. Because at least in terms of morality, arrogance deserves to be shunned. He will have some reason, even if a defective reason, to have a relook at his arrogance. Even if it's just a moral reason. But he'll want to look at his arrogance. Why am I arrogant? But the fellow who wears silence, who keeps quiet, who acts humble, the nice lady, is more dangerously placed than the arrogant man. More dangerously placed. You are carrying every bit of the poison that he is carrying with no mechanism at all 
to tell you that it is a poison. When you ask questions, do you know what you are asking? You are asking, what do I add to my diet to build up my health? Can you tell me some sauce, some pills? And what is your diet? Poison. You consume plate after plate of poison every day and you think that what you are missing in life is a little bit of taste. That the aroma of your food is not quite good. So can I have a little bit of seasoning please? But poison is your very diet. That you will not give up. You are made up of that. And when I say this, my words will fall upon deaf ears because you know what is good for you. It is impossible for you to imagine, to conceptually visualize a poisonless life. Simply impossible. You cannot do that. So even as you sit in front of me, even if you agree with me, you will consume poison right here, right now. Because you operate only out of your thought and analysis. You are so damn scared. You will agree with me in a conceptual way. And you do. I do not deny that. Most of you who are sitting here, are sitting here because of their conceptual agreement with what I say. But that cannot help you. It is like telling the doctor, yes doctor, I understand. I understand that one should not take poison. And even as you are saying this, another morsel of poison has gone into your mouth. You are busy taking poison, even while agreeing that poison kills. Your very way of listening, your very method of approaching is all yours. You are holding on to yourself like a scared girl holds on to her dear doll. And the girl is so sure that she must be scared. Hmm? She is abs absolutely sure that there is reason to be scared. In that sense, she is very confident of her knowledge. You too are very confident of your knowledge. Look at your face, the confidence with which you think. 
when you're lost in thought have you seen how your face looks you're so sure absolutely assured you are you know you are doing the right thing look at your eyes you know your calculations will lead you to the truth you know that you should just have a camera in your living spaces and that camera should be able to give you footage of yourself when you are not really aware that you are being watched by the camera and then look at your face at no moment in the day does the very fact of your ignorance strike you look at how you smile you know you have been able to manipulate things look at how you plan you know this is how things work see how you think see even at this moment your face is so full of yourself you really are somebody behind the expression that you are carrying is somebody who has set his teeth who has clenched his fists and is determined not to give up even at this moment you are actually at war with me thought is your weapon and you are fighting and fighting in fact i must praise your determination you might have been otherwise a laggard and a loser in life but in one sense you are not a loser at all you will not allow yourself to lose this battle you will not allow yourself your fists are clenched with all your might and you will fight to the last breath you remember your determination sushmita that night you were at war you are always at war each one of us here is at war you will fight to the last breath you remember your determination sushmita that night 
you were at war you are always at war each one of us here is at war and when you are at war you have to be sure and you are so very sure a wrenching sense of the fakeness of it all simply doesn't strike you it doesn't you are sure that it is real and important you will resist me with the utmost force that you can produce there are various ways of resisting one way is to avoid me the other way is to sit in front of me go away and avoid me again your own sense of morality will pinch you but you are so smart sitting here you have assuaged your sense of morality you have proven yourself to be good spiritually inclined and you have been able to defend yourself as well you know when a tank or a huge gun is firing there are two ways to avoid the fire either go away very far or come right in front of the gun powerful long range big guns cannot hit you if you are right in front of them and you know that and you know that how long will you keep knowing it's not that some part of your knowledge is non factual i'm saying that your entire mind stuff is fake rotten diseased poisonous the entire stuff and the very foundation of it I'm not asking you to clean up a part. I'm not suggesting incremental change.
whatever you know is rubbish it is absolutely rubbish not a part of it not that some part of it is all right think and know that you are thinking rubbish decide that what i said was worthy of writing down and know that your decision was rubbish but you are so smart you are so confident of your decisions hmm you know what to take from me and what not to take from me you know what to accept and what to reject you know when to come when not to come you do not need improvement you need dissolution do you understand that every single grain of the structure that you have built up the structure that you are is suffering is illusion even the smallest thought about the most trivial of daily matters is misplaced move one step and you know the step is wrong you cannot do anything right anything this good entertainment watch the faces of people as they stand on railway platforms in the market place watch husband and wife talking to each other watch people arguing with each other it doesn't matter what they are arguing about it doesn't matter what the objects of their conversation are what is striking is the sureness on the face they know what the whole thing is all about yeah i know can you visualize one woman talking to the other two men discussing politics one man explaining the market conditions to the other businessman somebody writing an email elaborating his situation have you seen your face when you are writing an email have you seen how deeply you believe that you know what you are writing when you are writing these questions see in your face you know what you are asking but 
you are all very humble people full of humility who are we people full of humility it never happens does it that the very ground under your feet appears shaking appears like giving way it never happens right you always feel sure of your standing hmm? it never happens that you just crumble down collapse just sit down where you are it doesn't happen it doesn't happen that the nothingness of it overpowers you it doesn't happen with you in daily living it doesn't happen right it doesn't happen that walking eating talking you stop and you don't know whether to proceed and how to proceed you just stop aghast powerless energyless it doesn't happen a sense of great awe and wonderment never overtakes you you're always on top always in control you're always your master aren't you hmm you're always composed you have thoughts you have thoughts confident young men and women walking down a busy market with rapid paces it never happens that you suddenly find that the energy is gone that you know where to go that the engine has just been turned off it doesn't happen in the middle of a heated argument it doesn't happen that you dropped it that the stupidity of it all just hits you hard and the entire motivation to carry on withers down it doesn't happen Look at your face in mirror. It never happens, right? That you're struck by the thing that you see. You never feel that you have no relationship with the face that you're looking at in the mirror. It never happens. you never stop you know you are that face you know that you are so sure very confident this is my face
it doesn't happen that you just stand there limp energyless directionless motionless thoughtless like an idiot you're never an idiot you're always very intelligent and it doesn't befit intelligent people to stand stupidly in front of mirrors wondering at the face that you're looking intelligent people don't do that right when they look at the image in the mirror they know they are looking at themselves no no i am that the face in the mirror and you must be intelligent you cannot be idiots it never strikes you that all this is just so fabricated it cannot strike you because it cannot strike you via thought and thought is all that you have even as i'm speaking to you you are probably analyzing what it means to be struck thought is not the arrow that will pierce the mind thought is not that arrow no gun can ever shoot itself have you ever seen a gun that can shoot itself dead you must be self assured the world doesn't like shaky people hmm the world doesn't like people who are bobbly wondering the world likes people who have figured out stuff yeah who know the game and who know how to win the game so that's how you act self assured even right now you are just disappointed you're not wondering and disappointment my dear is another thought you will not let go of thinking you're just disappointed right you're not letting yourself lose what kind of experiences have you had how scared are you and a scared man is a very dangerous man very very dangerous man
till you think you can know knowing will not happen till you are asking a question no solution will come to you there is the look of guilt there is disappointment but you still know that you must be guilty do you still know that there is reason for disappointment you still know you'll not leave the field of knowledge it's not happening it's just not happening hmm you were probably happy a while back which was a thought you are not so happy right now which is another thought but you will not give up thought hmm at best one thought will make way for another thought whatever you are certain of that is your bondage just figure out what you are certain of more certain you are of something the more bonded you are maya rides on certainty whenever you feel sure of something just stop in your tracks stop dead because you are wrong hmm you are just wrong whenever you come to a conclusion reject it because it is wrong I'm saying wrong because you understand only that language, right and wrong. I cannot say drop the conclusion. You do not know what that means, dropping. So tell it it's wrong. It doesn't mean its opposite is right. Its opposite is equally wrong. the more surety there is in your conclusion the more wrong it is now what all have you concluded you think you love somebody seriously You sure? You think you know your the right action? You think you know your responsibility? You think you know the face in the mirror? Hmm? Of course you know. Of course you know. look at your thoughtful faces 
look at how the mind machine is working to its full potential it has to give you conclusions intelligent questions you ask huh? I know what the quality of your mind is whom are you deceiving by asking such profound questions I know what you are after. Yeah. That little bit of flesh. That little bit of security. Kaha teri ye nazar hai, meri ja mujhe khabar hai. there is nothing wrong with eyeing whatever you are eyeing all right it happened but you are so sure that must happen it must keep happening you are so committed towards defending it deep trenches you have dug and you are hiding there with your weapons sometimes you fire left sometimes you fire right sometimes you fire with a shaven face sometimes you fire with lots of beard but you are firing all the time and you are only one enemy realization and in that realization there is no place for your knowledge yeah innocence simply doesn't shine cleverness writ large you could not have been feeling bad had you not been clever even at this moment i'm not fighting your history i have nothing to do with that i'm seeing what is here right now even right now you have reasons to feel bad how can you feel bad if you are not so clever only the clever man will feel bad even at this moment i don't see jaws dropping i see your heads down not your jaws dropping shame is just thought shame is just more thought
by being ashamed you are only proving that you are very smart very very smart you know that there is something to be ashamed of yes so i am ashamed of myself very clever sometimes you indulge at other times you are ashamed at both times you are clever you know when to indulge and you know when to pay for your indulgence by feeling ashamed so clever you are right and you compensate you compensate you move around with a weighing machine a balance in your mind and you think that thought x can neutralize thought y you think good character will take care of bad character sometimes you will have an ugly expression of happiness on your face at other times you will have an equally ag- expression an equally ugly expression of sadness on your face but your face will never be clean of expression never empty of expression never innocent at some point you'll be burning in the desire to consume at other times you'll be burning in the fire of repentance huh but you would never be at peace sometimes the mirror would be reflecting fairy lands at other times the mirror would be showing lands of demons but never is the mirror empty like the sky how smart you are by expressing guilt you think you are going beyond no you are so clever that you will express guilt so as to continue with the expression you get bored of one thought right you get bored of consuming so you bring in another thought consume 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 think 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 then renounce 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 think 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 consume or renounce thought must continue bad thought bad thought bad thought good thought good thought good thought but i'm so sure of what is good and what is bad see look at what you do you write stuff to me you never write stuff to me
about your happinesses but when you are sad and repentant you write to me and deep within you have a desire to gain my acceptance you are so clever and so sure you know what is good thought and what is bad thought and you think i operate in the field of good thoughts that is your concept of me you know what are bad things you don't mention them to me you know what are the good things you mention them to me and you think i'll be pleased that is the concept the image that you have of me so everything according to you is within the range of thoughts and you have located me as well within the field of your thoughtful universe you have given me a safe home somewhere you know what are the things to tell me you know what are the things to not to discuss with me so clever you are so clever you are what do you think i'm a patriarch some kind of fashionable saint what do you think i'm anybody within your mental domain but you are confident that you have figured me out hmm you are very confident you have figured me out right treat him like some kind of a respectable elder give him parental kind of respect yeah yes you are very very sure of everything including me you know who i am you know who you are i salute your convictions you know so much the entire peace has been unraveled 